y'all. It's Diane, Michelle Craft One, and my little barn door. And we are finally back from our lake vacation. And I know I had told y'all before I left, um, when I did the um, flip throughs of Rhonda's journals in the consignment booth, and had such a fit over her cute, cute um, charms that she had on her farm journals. And so I told y'all that I would try to figure out how to make them. And so um, this is what I've come up with. Um, here, let's just do this so you can see them a little better. Hopefully it'll focus. Is it focusing? Maybe. <laughs> it's kind of blurry. Sorry. Okay, let's try this one. And let's just put a few in my hand. So I did some in several different ways trying to figure out how to make them. And I emailed Rhonda and asked her if she could tell me how she made them. And so she emailed me back and they're fairly simple. And so I had tried them a few different ways. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I tried them. And, um, and then you can decide which way works the best for you. So, um, what I did was I went through and I found some images that I love for farm style journals. And you can do this with any image, um, but I just wanted some particularly for farm style journals. Um, and so, um, I do have, let me see, um, you can make them front and back. So, this was the front of this one and this is the back. And this is a different little digital that I found um from a lady named i think it's tea time and dolls and so i got her little digital and because it had smaller images that i could work with and then most of these images i found on pinterest or um you know somewhere on the internet these are old farmer's wife magazine covers and um ladies home journal covers and um, there's some with uh roosters and then this is like a home arts um, magazine uh, from back in the 40s and 50s. And I have all kinds of different images um, that I was going to try and work with. And so I'll go ahead. I think I'm going to go ahead and release these as a digital since I've already um, put them together. I figure I'll share with with y'all. So I'll go ahead and put them in my Etsy shop so that you guys can grab them if you want them. Um, but I'll just show you kind of, um, you know, they're not anything special as far as a design or anything like that. They're just images. Um, and so on some of them, I have different size images. So they're not going to all be like in a straight row or anything. Um, and some of them are larger and some of them are smaller. I did that on purpose so I could have different sizes to work with. So, um, I think I'll share these with y'all. So if you want, um, to grab these, you can grab them in the Etsy shop, um, to make your own charms. So what I've done is I've gone ahead, I have, um, a sheet that I've already been cutting out of and I've gone ahead and, um, gotten some started but I want to show you um, two different ways to do them okay so the first way is you can use any kind of cardstock now this is from um, a little drink juice box carton um, and it's just chipboard so you can use chipboard or you can layer um, cardstock and I'll show you how to do both okay so basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to choose an image um, that we want, and I think I want this one. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut this out. And I don't cut it out perfectly to start with because we're going to do some um, some really fine tuning or fine trimming um, in a little bit. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this. And glue it on to my cardstock. Now, if you're going to use a cardstock that has not a cardstock, this is not cardstock; it's chipboard, um, or you know, a cracker box, or a cereal box, or whatever you have available. 
But if you're going to use something like this with a printed side to it, you're going to want to make sure that you um, sand it first. And this is just a very light um, 60 um, uh, sanding paper. So basically, you just want to sand it enough so that um, your glue will stick well to it. Sorry about the noise. I know that uh, that's a rough noise. <laughs> so sorry. But you just kind of want to rough it up a little, and that just will give the glue something to hold on to. Okay? So I'm going to kind of wipe this off. I'm going to get the dust off of my wax. I usually put wax paper down just because it um, keeps my mat from getting so messy. Okay, so one of two ways. Um, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to glue it down to the edge of my, chip, uh, my chipboard or cracker box or whatever it is that you have on hand. Um, I'm just using Aline's Tacky Glue. You can use this, you can use Mod Podge, you can use uh, Fabri-Tac, you can use pretty much whatever glue you want to use. But you just want to make sure that whatever glue you use, once you stick it down, you let it dry really well before you start trying to cut. Okay, so now we can either do it like this, and we'll let this dry, or we can lay a strip of our images down. Um, and do multiple ones at a time. And so I already have one that I've done like that. So I've laid these strips down and I've let this one sit and dry. So I went ahead and kind of pre-prepared um, for the video so that, you know, we don't have to sit and wait on glue to dry because how boring would that be? So um, we'll go ahead and start playing with these. Um, if you don't have chipboard or some kind of um, box that you can do, um, the way Rhonda said she did it was with multiple pieces of cardstock. So let's go ahead and pick a, another image. Let's just use this one since it's a single one. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this one down since we're only doing one. But you could do do it this way and do a single one, or you can do do you know a strip like this. So it's pretty much a matter of your choice, whatever works for you. You just want to find what works the best for you. Okay. So we've cut this down. And so we just need some extra chipboard um, to use. So you're going to need this piece. And then you'll need four more pieces of chipboard. I'm sorry about the focusing. Hang on and let me. Is that even focusing? There we go. Okay. So, um, you're going to need four more pieces. So, what you're going to do is you're just going to layer it. And I have this piece that I had printed when I did those kits that I forgot to do a video on. They're in my shop. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out this video. Just one second. Okay. I think that will be better. Um, so, anyway, it misprinted. Um, the colors printed out wrong. I needed to change my ink. So, um, but I didn't want to throw it away because, I mean, it's good cardstock. So, basically, I'm just going to take this piece. And you see, I have it. Y'all know I can't cut straight for nothing. So, um, you know, it's not cut straight, beautifully straight or anything. But that's okay. So, I'm just going to glue a little more glue. And then I'm just going to lay it in the corner down here. And the reason I usually try to do the corners is just simply because it lines up, you know, in the corners. And, okay. So, and again, you can do this in a strip or you can just do a single image. Okay. And it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim it up. So that's one piece of cardstock. We're going to go ahead and glue it again. And put it down. I always like to put it down and let it stick for a minute before I try to cut it. So that will be two pieces of cardstock. You basically want five pieces if you're going to use the cardstock. 
So we have three here with the image and then the two layers that we've done. And then we'll glue one more. And when I lay it down, I kind of smear it around a little and that helps the glue to settle in and dry a little better. Okay, so we'll go ahead and cut this one out. And again, I'm not worrying about being perfect um, because we'll trim this up. Okay. All right, so now that gives us one, two, three, four layers there. And then you can decide at this point, do you want an image on the back or do you want it to just be plain on the back? It's completely up to you but I think I'm gonna put an image on the back. So let's pick an image to have on the back. Let's see, what do we have on the front? We have the farmer's wife on the front. Let's do, I wanna try and find one that's a similar size. So this one looks like it's a similar size. So we'll cut this one out. And again, I'm not cutting it perfectly because we'll do some trimming up. I do want to cut it down as closely as possible for the backside one though, so that I can get it lined up pretty straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off these white edges. So we had a great time at the lake. It was so relaxing and I was able to quit smoking and I have not had a cigarette since Saturday. The first week I would smoke maybe two to three cigarettes a day just to kind of knock the edge off and not be so grouchy and I was okay with that and then um, Saturday I just kind of decided okay I'm done with that and I didn't want any more so um, I didn't get any more cigarettes after that so I've done done really well with it I'm proud of myself all right so we're gonna go ahead and put our glue here and thank you all so much for all of your support and your encouraging and kind words um, it means more to me than I can tell you and um, I can feel y'all's prayers so I appreciate it all right now sometimes I'll just go ahead and smear the glue in and it's mainly just to make sure that I get the glue really good on the edges because you don't want your edges separating. And then I'm gonna flip it over and make sure I've got it the right orientation. And then we're just gonna put him down here. And I'm gonna kinda of put it in the center just to make sure that if I do any trimming, hopefully I don't trim off my words on my little magazine pages. So now, before we do any trimming or anything, we need to let this dry for a while because right now, with it still being wet, your pieces are gonna slip and slide and it just is not conducive, um, you know, to, to trimming it right now. So, I went ahead and I did another one, this one, and I've already let the glue dry on it except for putting the back piece on. So I'll show you another way that you can do with the back piece. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and try and trim this one up. We'll work with this one in just a minute, um, but we'll let that one start drying. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I haven't tried this, so um, we'll try it on camera and see if it works. I'm gonna try and trim this on my trimmer and see how it does. My trimmer will generally cut four to five pieces of and that's not gonna work because it's not gonna stay straight. It will generally cut four to five pieces of cardstock. So I think it might work to do it this way, but we're gonna see. If it doesn't work on your trimmer, then you can always just take your scissors and just trim it down because y'all can probably cut straighter than I can. Um, y'all know me, I just don't do well with cutting straight. So <laughs> I always have that battle. So I am gonna try it on my trimmer. And I just kinda go back and forth with it. And this just basically gives me, you know, a straighter line than for me to try and 
cut a straight line. It just does not work well for me at all. <laughs> I think it's a left-handed thing. <laughs> okay, and if it doesn't cut all the way through all the layers, then you can just take your scissors and just trim that last layer. Oops, and see sometimes it doesn't trim it all the way. Okay, and then we'll go to the bottom piece down here. And I just kind of want to line it up. Okay, and that one came off really well. All right, so we have that. Now, this is going to be our charm. And so what I want to do is I just kind of want to smooth the edges on it. Let me find, oh, here we go. And so I just have like a little, um, this is an emery board. It's just in the shape of a butterfly, but it's like a fingernail file. And so I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just kind of smooth the edges. Just to make sure that, you know, everything's even and it's not jagged. Because sometimes when you try to trim up little bitty pieces like this, you have extras hanging over. So I'm just going to kind of sand it down with the fingernail file just to make sure it's good and even. Okay, and then I'm just going to wipe it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and put another piece on the back. So we're going to use this one because I think it's super cute. It's a good, good housekeeping one. And we're going to trim this down. And then this one's going to be smaller than the front one. This is a little larger of an image. And so what I want to do is I want to ink this. And I can't find my ink right now. So we're using, um, I'm using shoe polish to ink my project right now because I can't find my ink. So I just have a little makeup sponge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over <laughs> and go ahead and put some on my sponge. And then I'm just going to kind of ink the edges to cover, you know, all the white. So I'm just going to ink around the edges here with my makeup sponge and shoe polish. I know. I'm so technical. <laughs> That's okay, though. Hey, you work, work with what you have to work with, you know. And that way you don't have to spend a boatload of money. But, I mean, this works just as good as ink does. I'm going to go ahead and ink the edges around both sides and it doesn't take much of the shoe polish to do the inking with it okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take I have this is just a you know just something pointy to hold it and I'm just gonna very lightly rub the ink or shoe polish it you know at this point <laughs> i'm just going to ink it up and make it look not so stark white pretty much is basically the whole deal and then we're going to go ahead and glue this one on and i probably should have inked the edges of it but that's okay all right we're going to make sure we're getting it on the right orientation and i'm just going to kind of smear it around a little let me get a little closer where you can see what I'm doing hope I didn't make you dizzy so we're just gonna kind of smear it around and move the glue around that's the main thing we're trying to do is just kind of move that glue around and then we want to make sure that we get our picture straight and then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dab the glue off just to make sure that we're not smearing glue everywhere. Now, generally, you know, you would want it to be the same size, but I think it looks okay um, not having it the same size as the front picture um, if you ink it. So I think what I'm gonna try to do, and I just might completely, nope, I'm not gonna try to do it. 
I would ink the picture before you lay it down. It'll just make it look a little better. And I'll kind of show you. I think I did one of them. That Yeah, I did this one that way. And if you can see, um, I had put a uh, vintage book page on the back of this one. And this picture didn't quite fit. So I just kind of inked around it. And, and it kind of blends in okay. And you can't really tell that it doesn't fit the whole thing. Okay, so now we're just going to let that one dry. And while that's drying, we're going to turn it over and we're going to go ahead and punch our hole. Where's my hole punch? Here we go. So I have this little um, hole punch. Um, it's just a very, it's like a pinpoint. Not really, it's a little bigger than a pinpoint hole punch. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but I, that's what I use to punch my hole in for you know for where I'm going to hang my uh, my jump ring sorry I'm trying to think and talk at the same time and obviously that's not working for me I think I'm going to put it on this side because then I know I'll miss all the wording and we're just going to punch it okay so these are fairly simple to make all right and then once we do that and this is pretty dry I'm going to go ahead and take some Mod Podge and we're gonna well I say Mod Podge mine's Elmer's glue and water and we're just gonna go over the back of this with that now you can use this or you can use your glossy accents on both sides I just like to use uh, the glossy accents on one side and that way you can kind of tell the front from the back but you can do it either way and I'll show you what I mean So like on this one, on this side, I have the glossy accents. Hopefully you can see the light on it and it's a little shinier. And then on this side, I just used Mod Podge to kind of give it a more matte finish. And so that way you know that this is the front of the charm. All right, so while this one is drying, while the Mod Podge is drying on it, I will show you um, because we're going to come back to this to the other side and put our um, now Rhonda said she used diamond glaze on hers but I didn't have diamond glaze so I'm just using glossy accents and it's you know it pretty much reacts the same all right so while we're waiting on that one to dry this is the one we did with the um, cardstock five pieces of cardstock this is the one that we're going to do with the chipboard in it and what I did was I went ahead and I put and I put it upside down, but that's okay, because <laughs> it's not going to matter. Um, but I put vintage um, dictionary page on the back of it, so it could just kind of have a backing, and it would hide the raw cardboard edge. So we're going to go ahead and trim these up. So let's bring our trimmer up. Let me move some stuff out of the way so I have a room to bring my trimmer up. Okay, and let me make sure I'm getting it in frame for y'all to be able to see so we're just going to trim these out and this is the thing that I like I like doing I personally like doing it more in the strips because it makes it a little easier to cut it and you kind of have a little bit more to hold on to since the little images are so small you know sometimes you don't have enough to hold on to to keep it in place so um, if you need to rearrange it or whatever, I can just use this and it kind of helps to move it around a little easier. And then I just press real hard here to hold it so it doesn't move. And then I'm just going to trim it up and do it on this edge. Whoops. This trimmer is so old till it just, the little thing doesn't stay in good anymore, the little blade. All right, and then let's trim this bottom one. Now see how, um, you know, they're not all even. They're different sizes. Um, so I'm just going to get it even with the largest one. And trim that up first. And then we'll go ahead and trim it off. OK, 
okay and see then you have your charm and then it's got the words on the back and even though they're upside down it's okay because <laughs> we're gonna fix it and make it a little more even and a little more pretty all right so see this image is a little bit bigger now if you know if I had them all the same size it would be easier to do your trimming but I didn't want them all the same size because I wanted to be able to have different size charms so that's kind of the point of that all right so we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and trim these out and I'll be right back okay so we've got these trimmed out and if you're like me and you have problems cutting straight even using a trimmer <laughs> because that always seems to be my problem I don't know if that's just my nemesis or what but I can't ever get anything cut straight so ink is my friend <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my little ink dauber that I had uh, put the shoe polish on because I can't find my ink. And I'm just going to go around the edges. No, wait. Before I do that, we need to sand. So let's just, we're just going to sand the edges a little. And make sure we have all the fuzzies and the extra pieces of cardboard off. So we'll go ahead and sand around them. And it doesn't take much. I mean, you're not trying to sand away half the image or anything. You're just trying to even everything up. Okay. Whoops. Okay. So now that we have it sanded, we can do our inking. So I'm just going to go ahead and see how um, I didn't get it cut, trimmed just straight. It's got a little bit of white there. But if you do the inking, we might need a little more ink on here. Or in this case, shoe polish until I find my ink. <laughs> I'll find my ink. I just got to, it's probably packed. Um, so we're just using shoe polish for now. All right, so I'm just gonna go around the edges, making sure that I cover the cardboard as well. And it covered up that extra little bit of white that you could see on the edge there. And then we'll turn it over. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this. And I'll do these later. We're just going to do one of these. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to ink the whole back side just to knock off some, some, uh, some of that starkness. Okay. So now I have to decide if I'm going to put an image on the back. And, and I think I will. So let's go ahead and put, I think... I think that one's too big so let me find one over here I'm just gonna cut this out kind of hard to see the edge of this because it has a very small cream border around it there we go and I might okay so now I'm going to take my ink and straighten this up a little because that's kind of crooked my scissors need to be sharpened all right, so now we're just going to ink around this image. Okay, and we're going to go ahead, make sure we've got it on there straight, and we're going to glue the back side of this. Where are we on our time? 
Okay, we gotta hurry. All right, and then we're just gonna glue this on. And in this case, the lettering needs to be upside down since I put them on there upside down. <laughs> like a silly. Okay. And then I'm just gonna press it in, make sure it's kind of centered. And then I'm gonna take my napkin and wipe off any excess glue. And sit it to the side to let it dry. Okay, so in the meantime, this is the one we did with the cardstock. Excuse all the glue and ink on my hands. So this is the one we did with the cardstock. And this is the side that we put the Mod Podge on. So on this side, we're going to use the glossy accents. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer for you so you can kind of see how I'm doing the glossy accents. Hopefully, it will focus okay for you. So basically, these are the glossy accents. And I'll show you the full bottle once, once we finish putting this on. And then you'll be able to... Um, and I'll put a link below in the video below. Actually, I think I might have a link below for the glossy accents. So, but if not, I'll put one in there to make sure that you can get it. All right, so I'm just going to take my little stick. And, you know, the hole that we punched, I'm going to put that through the hole. And I'm just going to put a solid layer of the glossy accents over the hole charm so basically i'm just using this little tool here i guess i'm i'm just using this little tool here to just hold hold it now i'm going to start on the edge and you kind of it's going to kind of hard going to kind of be hard for you to see but i'll do the best i can let me get some of this down Okay, we're stopped up. Hang on, let me unstop my glue. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so I'm just going to put a layer. I'm going to start at the edge. Come on, glue. He just does not want to come out. Whoops, I see if you get it stopped up. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start on the edge, and I'm just going to run, whoops, that's leaking out, so, but it's okay. I'm just going to run a solid layer all over my charm, and it's going to look a little cloudy at first, and if you get it too thick, it'll be real cloudy, so you don't want it too thick. Just kind of a thin, solid layer over your charm, and then you just kind of want to let it sit for a minute, and you want to push out any bubbles that you see in it. You want to make sure that you get good um, good glue on the edges so that it gives you a good seal. But you kind of want a good, even layer of the glossy accents. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off a piece of my wax paper to sit that on for it to dry. Cause you're gonna want these to really and truly, you want them to cure overnight. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda slide this onto this extra little piece of wax paper here. And that way I can bring it up to the camera and you can see it closer. Closer. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a bubble right here. Right there is a bubble in my glossy accents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take more glossy accents and I'm just going to put a little dot there and just kind of smooth it around like this to make sure. And then I'm going to turn this to different angles so that I can make sure, it, you know, that there aren't any bubbles that I'm not seeing. Okay, and so you can kind of turn it and see any imperfections. And it doesn't have to be completely perfect. So then you're just going to sit this to the side and let it dry overnight. It's because you want to make sure you get it good and cured. Okay, and so I have one here that I've let dry overnight. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to punch my hole in this. So, in that event, let me go ahead and zoom out. I'm sorry, I'm 
so close now you can't see anything. So before I make a mess, I am going to, I'm just going to scoop up this glossy accents onto this little piece here. And just kind of spread it out in a thin layer. Just like that. So you can do it this way. You can do it, you know, just pouring the glossy accents on. However you want to do it. Really and truly, whatever works for you. There's no wrong or right way to do it. It's just however you can get it on the best way possible. Okay, we're going to add him to our little wax piece. And I just realized that I didn't ink the edges of that one before. Um... Before I put that glossy accents on. Okay, so and in the event that you put the glossy accents and you forget to do your hole punch, that's okay because you can always go back and do your hole punch. So we're going to go right here and you can punch it through the glossy accents, but it might make a mark on it. So I would suggest try to remember to punch your hole before. But you know what? It didn't make a mark in the glossy accents. It's still good and smooth. So it's got a good protective coating. That's good. So then we're going to, we need to put either another coat of glossy accents, which I think I want to do on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing and put my coat on here. And it doesn't have to be, again, it doesn't have to be super thick. And you just kind of hold it the best way you can. And then I'm going to take my Glossy Accents tip and I'm just going to go back over it in the opposite direction because what will happen, I'm going to go over my edges good. What's going to happen is it's going to kind of smooth itself out. But when you do it like that and you do it quickly, um, you're probably going to get a lot more bubbles. You can kind of see I have quite a few more bubbles. So I'm just going to go back over it really lightly with... A little bit more of the glossy accents so that we can cover up any holes or bubbles that we've left on it and I'm not squirting a whole lot of glossy accents on here now I'm just putting a very little just enough to kind of join in with what's already on there so it will smooth it out some Got a little bubble there. We're going to get the edge. Now you don't want too much on the edges or you'll have, you know, like thicker edges than, than you have in the center. Okay. And I think that's got that covered. Going to put a little bit more down here on the bottom. Okay, and we're just going to put him over here to dry. So let me bring these back over and see if we can slide this one onto there. There we go. And we'll just let him dry overnight. So that those were the little, um, well, the center one was the one with the cardstock pieces. Now let me show you one more that I did. I did this one and I just used a punch. So if you want to do that, you can, you know, make the images larger, use a punch and punch them out. This one's done on cardstock and then I inked the back and then I can put another image back here if I want to. But isn't he a cute little pig? But you know, you can still see on this one, you can see a few bubbles, but you can still see the image and it doesn't have to be perfect. You're not, you don't have to be perfect to do this. So, um, this is the card stock one or the, um, you know, the one we did with the juice box. And so you do it the same way. You want to put your hole, punch your hole in it. And you don't want to get too far into the middle because you want your jump ring to be able to go through it really well. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me find one that's ready for the jump ring. Here we go. So once you get ready to put your jump ring in, and then we'll close this video because we're getting close to our time frame. 
I'm just going to take my little pick and push it through the center of the hole that I had punched out before I put the glue on so that I can make sure my jump ring is going to go through it easily. Okay, and then you can use whatever size jump ring you have. I have these larger size ones, so I'm just going to use it. And I'm going to find the edge of my jump ring or, you know, the separation. And I'm just going to open it up a little and line this in there until I can line it up with my hole. And then I'm just going to push that jump ring right through the hole there. And then just close it up. Close up the jump ring. There we go. Okay. So then we have a finished piece. So um, let me get a piece of white so you can see these a little better. So I'll lay these out here. For you to be able to get a better view of them and again they're not perfect nothing I ever do is perfect and I'm okay with that um, you know it's all a matter of how much time you want to put in it how much time and effort you want to put in it and that is completely up to you but don't panic and don't be hard on yourself okay so hopefully you can see that okay in the lighting but those are the little charms so you can do it either with the juice box or chipboard or or you can, you know, do the five pieces of cardstock together. So hopefully that wasn't super, super confusing for you. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for me if you will. And I thank y'all so much for watching. I hope this helped. And again, if you have questions... Put them in the comment box below and I'll do my best to answer them because I hope. I kind of feel like I didn't make that super clear, but I hope I did. <laughs> so anyways, I love y'all real big.